No better person than our moderator this morning, Ola Alvorson. He says I sound as if it's my native language, but I practiced a lot today. Um, and I had to get it right because this man's got some skills that you did not know about, but I'll tell you about those skills. But he is the founder and CEO at Result. He's also the co-founder at Keynote Media Group. And this is the bit you didn't know about him. He's a kickboxing world champion. So please make some noise for our moderator, kickboxing world champion. <laughs> Hello. Good seeing you. I want to have you with me all the time with introductions <laughs> like that. My kickboxing always comes and hunts me. Uh, raise a hand. Did anybody try any martial arts? Up with a hand. Okay, there's some martial artists here. Well, for the rest of you, uh, it's a very, very stupid sport. You get beaten up even if you win. You're always like nervous and you have pains. There's no money. There's no beautiful women waving at you afterwards. So why do you do it? It's very, very exciting. So when I stopped my kickboxing career, I thought, what could be equally exciting? And that was building companies. So for the last 20 years, I've been involved in numerous startups, both as a founder, investor, a media company, and an advisor. And one of the most interesting fields for fast-growing companies is, can you partner with a media company, and how can you do that so that you can grow, both locally and internationally, much faster than your competitors? So with that, I would like to invite Andreas back from ProSieben. Andreas, come back on stage. So it's great, because you get another applause. Isn't that fantastic? <laughs> Sit down, uh, and then I also want to have Kirsten uh, from Burda come here, but we need a share for Kirsten, so come. Kirsten is from Burda Media, one of Germany's and Europe's leading media houses. Could we have a share, please? Thank you very much. Two people, two shares. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, Kirsten, please have a seat. Uh, and I've always wanted to have a TV show. This is the closest I get. So I'll sit over here. So we, we heard from Andreas uh, that Proceben, they're very interested in investing media to get shares and rev share and build companies. Burda Media, uh, traditional magazine group, been, uh, go, been, on, been around forever. Uh, how do you look upon this field? So we at Border International, um, we are the part of Border dealing outside of Germany. So we uh, represent 17 countries from Asia to South America. And um, you mentioned us as a magazine, traditional magazine company, but we are much more than this. Yeah, that was so your history. Sorry about that. our history, and uh, we are uh, nowadays much more about this. And so we are also looking uh, very different in, in, in that um, field already, because um, uh, media for equity means for us not only giving pages in our magazines, but uh, being a media platform for investments for startups as well as later stage um, uh, uh, companies. So um, uh, uh, we see ourselves as an attractive strategic partner where brands can uh, grow with us, can uh, make usage of our brands and use our media platforms. But you also um, help them with other things. You help them with advice locally, you help sure. them with, it could be logistics or other things as well. Could you Absolutely. explain that a little bit? So it's more about um, uh, asset for, for equity in the end because as a media company um, uh, in different countries, uh, on the one hand we can offer an international environment to grow in international markets um, because um, uh, in the countries um, we have um, our local entities and local uh, experts so it's um, about uh, asset management as well so they use our offices but they also lose our, use our logistics they use our media and also media means today not only magazine media it is digital media channels it is even a huge event business behind mm -hmm. so all contact uh, to our clients and um, we try to be a strategic partner, meaning um, we are growing together with these companies and um, offer also a lot of consulting and, and, and uh, support with it. So if I'm sitting here in the audience, I have the most fantastic company, which a lot of people out here actually has, and they're looking at growing internationally. When should they come to you and how, how is a normal conversation? I, I, it must be very difficult to understand what's the price of the media, the valuation of the company. How, how, do you, how does the process typically look? See if that works. Does, can we get some sound in the microphone over here? Yeah, the, so the process is the following. You, you know, uh, basically, um, 
there's a contact made somewhere between us and you. In the coffee break. Coffee break is a great opportunity. Lunch break is a great opportunity. You know, find me on LinkedIn. That's sort of how it starts, right? And then, you know, there's a mutual process where, you know, you need to be basically um, ready for TV. That's really important because, you know, there's a lot of scale coming when you do TV advertising. So it's about the maturity of your company, first of all. So if you don't have logistics in place, there's no point in, in, exactly. in doing yeah. TV ads. Yeah. Exactly. So if you're an e-commerce store and you don't have enough stock in your warehouse, you know, don't do TV because all it will lead to is stock outs. Uh, if you have any website, you, know, you need to be able to handle the traffic increase. So all of those sort of things need to be ready and we can help you evaluate if you're ready or not. Um, and the second thing is then, you know, we need to find the model, you know, is it uh, media for equity or media for revenue deal that, uh, that you and your investors are open and interested mm -hmm. for as well as us. So, so, you know, that's where we need to find common But ground. do they always have to pay you something or can they just go and say, take part of our revenues, launches as Germany and we'll, we'll share the revenues? Yeah. So there's the two models. Maybe I explain briefly the two models. So the media for equity model works in the following way. You get media at a highly discounted rate. And in exchange in the cash value that this media is worth, we take an equity stake based on your last post money valuation. That's the media for equity uh -huh. topic. And we are interested in media for equity if we have a strategic interest in the company as well as we really believe in the equity story, right? Mm -hmm. that's, that's the key for that model. For the other model, it's the media for revenue model. Uh, we basically offer you, again, media for very highly discounted prices, so you can afford it as a startup. But in turn, we take, you have to pay cash for it, part of it is cash, and the other part is often a revenue share. Um, and, and, and so this is the model for more cash-rich companies that are even at a later stage, um, and, um, you know, that, uh, you know, where we maybe say, okay, we're not so sure about the equity story, but this, the potential of TV can still be significant, and therefore we want to do a deal, but we rather want to do a media for revenue, not a media for equity deal. And Justin, it also how depends does on your investors what they, you know, prefer, because obviously there's some dilution happening when you know we come into the play. What does, how, how does these models uh, work in Burda? So um, I can agree with the media for equity is uh, in, in the structure is the same, mm -hmm. and um, I think we are perhaps a little bit more into the strategic partner that you described it. So um, uh, our media for equity deal is not only media; it is really a package of um, 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 assets we offer in that in a very very close partnership. Mm -hmm. Um, the media for revenue is, um, uh, honestly speaking, for us, not um, a pure investment um, uh, um, uh, opportunity. Here we see ourselves uh, more as a, as a corporation partner in the beginning, and we try to, to move from a media for revenue deal, I would not say investment, but a deal, into uh, uh, perhaps media for equity or any other kind of investment mm -hmm. deal. So your right. long-term view is to become a shareholder, a partner, and I, when we spoke before, he also said a friend of the company. Uh, so, 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 it's, so that's your goal, and media for rev share, that's something you can do to try out the waters. Yeah. So as we, um, uh, the part of Border Border International has no funding in that case. So we are not dealing with a fund we have uh, for, for the year and, and we spend it. We do it really case by case. Mm. And therefore, um, um, uh, we see the media for equity. Why do we do it, actually, is um, we think in brands of the one hand, but we also think in target groups. So we are investing um, uh, in companies uh, where we see our target group uh, find themselves uh, again, meaning marketplaces and all kind of other mm. content offers or whatever um, it could be. So, um, but it we doesn't merge it with our media. Um, so it is um, a support, and and they use our platforms. Mm. But we see it as an extra channel which we ourselves will never develop, perhaps mm -hmm. because we are coming from very different competences. But our target groups and consumers are interested in that, or our advertising clients, mm. or whatever uh, we are dealing with. Could you mention and some of the brands you represent, if, if somebody doesn't know? There's some um, of the most iconic brands. 
Yeah, for example, um, um, I would say, um, I think it was mentioned here yesterday by my colleague before, uh, we have a huge corporation, we are investor in Glam. It's an advertising network, and this is more a company um, where we did a deal together, uh, which is also a media for equity deal. Mm -hmm. They use our media um, in that case. But um, more or less, they use mostly our sales performance. Mm -hmm. uh, but the sales the for countries. which brands? You have L, and you have all kinds of yeah, oh, ah, okay, that way, okay. Um, um, yeah, we rep uh, Border International represents um, a huge portfolio of international magazine brands, and we are the biggest licensee uh, shareholder of um, a fashion uh, magazine, so we represent in the countries from L to Harper's Bazaar, InStyle, Marie Claire, mm -hmm. um, not in every country each brand, um, but we are very, very strong in luxury and fashion brands, mm -hmm. and um, but um, we are also having a huge portfolio of advisory brands which mm. are mostly owned by, by Border. Mm. So the opportunities are quite uh, wide mm. and the target groups are also wide. So but what, what kind of things would excite you most and you most? What's the sort of radar that you're looking with when you look for companies? Hello? Oh yeah, it works. Um, the type of companies we're mm -hmm. looking for. I think, you know, um, it obviously uh, a B2C company with a unique product. Yeah. Um, that's and, and a broad and a broad reach. Um, that's that's what we're really looking for because TV is a reach medium. You can reach a lot of people uh, with it, and it's a very broad audience you're reaching. And and therefore the value proposition of the company uh, needs to be also very broad. Uh, and and. Um, and so that's sort of the company. But, but what happens if, if I'm, if I'm a, a travel agent in the Ukraine and you can take me to Germany big time, what does your other client say about that, that you're like helping their competitors? Do they have any problems with that or? Um, so basically, you know, it all it's all competition at the end of the day, right? And, uh, and you know, we're, we're, we're building many, many different companies mm -hmm. and uh, and just like with our advertising clients, we have BMW and Volkswagen mm. doing, you know, commercials on our networks. Mm. And for those sort of deals, we don't do them category. Uh, no. There's no category exclusivity um, because at, at the end of the day, oftentimes what you also see is when you advertise a certain product, let's say a travel agent on TV, all the other travel agents benefit from it yeah. as well mm. because you know you raise the awareness for an entire category. Mm. Uh, so, you know, at the end of the day, uh, there's no exclusivity or anything like that. What are you looking for? So, um, we are looking for um, companies uh, that fit um, uh, to our target groups, first of all. Mm -hmm. Um, we are only looking into B2C companies, mm -hmm. and um, uh, we are looking into transaction models, but also we are interested in uh, uh, infrastructure for our own um, um, uh, uh, media development. Uh, it could be also only technology. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, in the end, um, also, for example, um, uh, this differentiates a little bit from TV, um, 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 because we are not only looking into reach and, and, and huge um, audiences, because we represent with our portfolio also very tiny target groups and yes. very specific mm -hmm. target groups. So it could be also, um, for example, just a recent investment in Russia was Bim Basket, with, is, which uh, serves um, uh, its parents uh, interested in, in high education for young kids. Mm -hmm. So I would say a very specific topic, mm -hmm. very um, also expensive topics. So it targets very tiny target mm. group, and um, so um, but more or less it's a high margin um, uh, topic. So we are open for all kind of creative ideas, um, uh, serving uh, more or less our target groups, but not necessarily very close to that. So related, I would say. So there's a lot of opportunity. What are some of the risks or problems with this model? Um, uh, if you have other investors involved, venture capitalists or business angels, do they like to partner with you or do they see their money as real money, your money as some funny money? Is there a problem there? Well, I'm happy to <laughs> speak about it. Um, yeah. At the end of the day, I think it's all about a good fit between the company, the investors, and us. 
and uh, and and you know that all depends on again the readiness of the company, um, you know the stage that it's in. Um, for example, TV comes really into play when you sort of are starting to plateau on your growth curve, right? So if you know the online marketing channels become inefficient because you know every additional dollar of marketing you're spending doesn't add you know incremental revenue that covers those costs, uh, so the marginal cost of your online marketing is 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 uh, increasing, then at one point everyone will realize that you need to look for different ways to promote your company, and and then really TAV advertising often comes into play because it's a real growth boost at a time where the typical channels that are used are no longer effective. I think the other thing is, you know, there needs to be a really close collaborative process between all parties involved, that everyone knows what you sign up for, um, and that, you know, you really make the most out of it. And uh, over those 50 to 60 uh, deals that we have done, we have great learnings. For example, when it comes to the spot creation, right? So you know, the, the spot, the TV spot, it really yeah. matters what sort of spot you have. The TV spot needs to be product focused. It needs to include a URL. If you have an app, it needs to be included and really pushed. You know, If you follow some of these rules mm -hmm. that, and key learnings that we're happy to share, then this works very, very well. Mm -hmm. What it doesn't work for is for a company with a, you know, let's say, mediocre USP, you know, it doesn't solve problems. TV doesn't pr solve problems. And it doesn't make, uh, you know, a, a weak USP strong. It makes a strong USP, a, product, a, a company with a strong USP grow. That's really what it's all about. And when, you know, all parties are aligned, then, that, then it works really well. Otherwise, it also doesn't. Many traditional models, both TV and magazines and newspapers, have been sort of challenged by the internet. The internet is very good at bringing users, less good at bringing money sometimes in terms of advertising revenues. Do you see this as the future model for media companies? So that media companies in the future becomes company builders more than ad salesmen and women? Or what is your look? How is this going to evolve in the future? I think um, we as a company don't see this model replacing another model, mm. but enriching. Yeah. So um, uh, also many of our, you talk about our advertising clients, they don't have even the chance to get in contact with such startups or such companies because they are dealing in a completely different field. But um, we also benefit from these um, uh, investments in that way because we can establish ourselves more than a media company and even um, um, there sometimes we have the opportunity to offer um, uh, or to, to get even um, these investments in contact with our clients and, 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 and make our portfolio or enrich our portfolio through a, uh, an additional channel. Mm -hmm. Mainly if we talk about, for example, we take over the um, sales response responsibility mm -hmm. uh, in that uh, deals on, and things like that. So um, it, it is enriching our portfolio. It, it is um, sometimes even opening a new revenue stream. Mm -hmm. But I have never seen that it is replacing completely our established business. And I think um, uh, I, we don't expect that for the future and see it like this. We see it additionally. No, because the reason I asked, I come from, <coughs> from Sweden and, and the Nordic region. And ships that uh, one of our media companies has been very early on, and they build one of the world's largest classified business, beating eBay in market, they're in 30 markets right now, and only that business is worth, I think, five times as much as all their newspapers in Sweden and Norway and so forth. So if you get this right as a media company, it's very, very powerful. If you get this right as a company, you saw Salando, uh, so it's a very powerful model if you get it to work. Uh, how do you get it to work? What's sort of the process? How long time would it take to do a deal with any of your companies? Starting at, at lunch break here, somebody approaches you, how long time would it take? I think it's a, you know, it, it depends really on the company and, and uh, you know, how, how sure you are that you want to explore this option. It, you know, it takes real willingness from, from both sides. Uh, it takes a couple of months to really get it ready, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I think, if, you know, you've got to, you, you have to do really a, detailed media plan and that has to be discussed. You have to create a TV spot if you don't have one. So all of these things have to be have to be done before you can 
launch mm. a campaign and so it's And you agree on all the media beforehand, so it's not that you get nighttime strange media when you think that you will get prime time media. You have a plan that you agree on first. Yes, absolutely. So yeah. it really depends on one key thing. Um, and, and that is, you know, what sort of audience does your company really need? Mm, mm. Not all companies need prime time audiences. So if you, for example, have a product that addresses mothers, uh, traditionally also mothers watch TV in the afternoon. So you can use the afternoon slots, for mm, example, mm, mm. Uh, that are obviously cheaper than the prime time slots. So it really depends and, mm. you know, the media planning will, will take care of all of that. Mm. Uh, what it's never, um, it is, you know, media that doesn't work because the interests are aligned. We have an interest, if we have mm. an equity stake, that the mm. media performs, yeah, yeah. and so does the company. And, and at the end of the day, it's everyone is interested to make it work well. Mm. Um, and so the collaborative process is key. Describe the same process with, with Bird International. Um, my experience is it depends always on how many parties and which parties are involved because um, uh, if you have a small team you deal with it can be six weeks and it also depends on the size of the investment of mm -hmm. course. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, sometimes it can go also more complex. Um, uh, it always depends if, if you, if for example, some some shareholders step out uh, through this deal, which kind of financing round it is, and mm. and it always depends. But I would say. Um, um, uh, it is uh, also um, dependent on how you are structured, how professional um, uh, is your um, uh, data you, you provide with your financials, your, your, um, your tr uh, roadmap and, and things like that. The more precise you are, the, more, the shorter you can present this and convince um, the people about that, mm. the shorter is the time uh, of negotiation mm. is my experience mm. and also um, um, it depends on, on the openness in our case, if you, if you talk about uh, media for equity, um, uh, how creative you want to um, um, play this topic um, because uh, we, are, uh, we can offer a wide variety of uh, possibilities and we are not so um, focused in the beginning to have a media plan day by day or week by week in place, um, we most of the time define a budget mm -hmm. and this budget can spend flexible. Mm -hmm. So perhaps we have a plan for the first three months and then um, we, we adjust it uh, to the needs or um, it can be allocated quite flexible. Mm -hmm. and Maybe there's one thing to add that's uh, quite important about um, TV media. You can uh, now track the effects of TV media very well. So there are you know, tracking tools like Net, um, WebTrack available and you install this, this tool and we help you with it. And then you can see directly you know, how, how the visits increase after you have basically uh, your TV spot has aired. And, um, and then there's a cost obviously associated to that. And what you can calculate is the cost per visit. And you can compare this cost to the cost per click you know, that you generate on Google. And you can associate also conversion rate to the TV traffic versus the traffic from other channels. So you know exactly what comes out of it. And generally, TV is always the most expensive medium. There's no doubt about it. But for the reasons I mentioned earlier, it's a brand building medium. It's an emotional medium. It reaches a large audience and for that you know there's a premium obviously to it mm -hmm. but you can track very well what it does for you and only if it works for you it's in our interest and therefore in your interest and it's and it's also very important if you're an entrepreneur if you have investors sometimes the investors are extremely excited about the chance that you could have 70 80 90 percent discount on the media so you can bring them into that conversation they need to put a lot less cash at risk if there's a strong media partnership. But what I also think is very important is that you don't just do the deal, trust the media companies to do the media, and think it's hands off. It's very much a collaboration where over the course of a media uh, partnership, maybe you double or triple the efficiency in media because you know how that works. You sit with the data. Normally you have your data, the TV partner or the magazine have their data. But if you combine this data, you can become a better marketeer, and that's also a competitive advantage.
So I think correctly done, this is one of the smartest thing an entrepreneur can do. But as you said, you really need to have your thinking clear, know what you want to do beforehand, because otherwise the conversations can be endless. And I think that's, that's something that we're all going to work on in, in the future to see how we can do it even faster and easier and, and get even more impact. And sometimes it's also about how, um, how high you value um, the alignment to our brands and, and how much this um, gives you a competitive advantage, uh, uh, even you deal in a, in a high competitive environment. I think we have very good um, experience with that, for example, with a startup called Showroom in Poland, mm -hmm. um, which is also going international. And this market is quiet. They fight uh, against each other already because marketplace like this um, uh, grow very fast. Um, but the alignment with our brands like L brings uh, a startup like this in a completely different environment of, of, of uh, communication and makes it more attractive for their partners. Yeah. Any final word for, from, from you, Andreas? I think, you know, uh, at Prozim, we, we had some very, very good learnings over the last couple of years about how we transform our business model and expand into the digital space. And, and one thing we have found out is that in our corporate environment, which you noted uh, well, is, is very different than a startup environment. Uh, we are, we're not good entrepreneurs at the end of the day. What we depend on is, uh, and that what, what we are interested in is, you know, entrepreneurs that create great businesses and at the right time decide to partner with us. That's the right model for mm -hmm. us. The model that we incubate ourselves or create businesses ourselves is by far not as successful as it is when you, you know, create a business and create a startup and at the right time reach out to us. And, and so, so, you know, that, that, that's, that's really the match made in heaven. Yeah, the, uh, during the dot-com boom, a boy came home to his mother and dad and said, Dad, Dad, I sold our dog for $100 million. And the dad said, that's incredible. How did you do that? Well, I got these two cats, and they're worth $100 million. And I think that's not how media deals should be done, that you try to say that your company is worth a ridiculous amount, and then you try to negotiate and sucker each other into a deal from any side. I think it's a true partnership or even a friendship where you build business together with very powerful organizations. And if you're interested in doing that, I think this is a very good start. So thank you very much for listening to the panel, and thank you very much to the panel. Thank you very much. Thank you.